Madam Speaker, I have given an account of what happened that night. But it is also important for us to consider what did not happen that night. The riot, though serious, did not spread to the surrounding neighbourhoods or to other parts of Singapore. It was contained within a particular area in Little India, the immediate vicinity of where the traffic accident took place. Foreign worker dormitories that night and workplaces the next day remained calm and peaceful. Not a single shot was fired that night, and there were no fatalities amongst the rioters, innocent bystanders, or our home team officers. Police completed their intensive investigations at the incident area overnight, and by 6.45 a.m. the next morning, Racecourse Road was reopened to the public. All was calm at the Little India MRT train station, adjacent to the incident site too. In short, the riot did not spread in time, in space, and was contained. The riot on the night of 8 December was the first in several decades. Because we have enjoyed peace for so many years, almost none of our home team officers, especially our national servicemen, had experienced riots. Nonetheless, they performed their duties under difficult circumstances, contained a rapidly developing situation, and restored order within two hours. Our officers then acted expeditiously to identify and deal with the persons involved and worked closely with other agencies to put in place measures to maintain law and order and restore calm in Little India. Madam Speaker, Singaporeans did not expect a riot to disrupt their lives, but I am heartened that they responded rationally when the unexpected happened. Several came forward to help. Business owners gave their support despite being affected by the restrictions imposed following the incident. Grassroots leaders in the Little India area stepped up to reassure residents and help the community to recover. I am confident that we will draw useful lessons from this experience and emerged more prepared and stronger as one home team, as one Singapore. We can try to anticipate every eventuality and plan and prepare for every one of them. But it's not possible to predict to the last detail what can happen. Nor can we set aside dedicated resources for every single eventuality all of the time and all at the same time. Instead, we must be resilient and adaptable so that when the unexpected happens, we are able to adapt and respond effectively. And this is how our home team officers are trained and prepared to ensure that they have the capabilities, resources and flexibility to deal with various contingencies. The same should be true for our community. We must be resilient and be able to deal with unexpected crises. We cannot be crisis-proof, but we can and must strive to be always crisis-prepared. Madam Speaker, the majority of Singaporeans recognise that foreign workers are generally law-abiding and do contribute to our society and economy. As many foreign workers told Minister Shamugam and Minister Ishwaran, Mr Dinakaran and Mr Vikram Naya during their visit to the dormitories, they want to continue working here. They appreciate our rules and laws and want to continue to live in peace and not be tarred with the same brush as the few who had done wrong.